Hello, welcome to um, Spreadsheets for Accounting, AAT Level 3, um, the tutorial book by Osborne Books. Uh, we're in, um, in Chapter 3 and we're in Conditional Formatting. Um, this is uh, Conditional Formatting is quite a big thing within Excel, um, but it's quite short within, uh, within the book. Um, and that's all that you get really in, in sort of page 78 is, is, a, is a, a page and a bit of conditional formatting. Uh, it is likely to be part of the exam. Heavily likely to have a question on here. Um, it needs a bit more of an explanation. So this, this, this video is quite important. For what is going to be a page, I'm probably going to spend about 10 minutes at least uh, going through it. So what is conditional formatting? Well, we've had in this one. Oh, what I will say as well is I've discovered that uh, the the videos um, don't pick up menu drop downs. So if I'm clicking here on this little arrow in there and I click on it, uh, there's something that appears here, a menu in here, which is not appearing on your video. So when I'm sort of swinging these around and you, you click on those yourself into Excel, you won't actually see it. Uh, what, what is actually appearing is this is appearing on the screen here. This is when I click on that, this appears. And when I click on these, these start to appear. So um, a bit annoying that, that um, game mode in Excel doesn't pick that up, but still there we are. Um, I'll have to use a, a series of print screens to highlight this, but if you have your Excel open as well, you'll be able to see how it, how it works. So, we've got, um, let's say we, we have an idea in our heads that if our postage expenditure was more than £100 in a, in a um, uh, month, uh, we're a little bit concerned about that, and we wanted to highlight that and communicate that to people by having these as red. Okay, that's one thing that we could do. Um, but why don't we just have Excel do that for us automatically? Because we have to keep going in manually and putting these things in uh, in different colours. So what can, so will Excel do that for us? Um, and the answer is yes. So it's, it's what's known as conditional formatting. So formatting conditional on particular rules. Yeah, so it does what's known as, an, as a logic equation or a logic uh, operation. And it sort of checks if this thing um, is true, then do uh, this formatting. Um, later on, when we do if equations and, and logic tests, we'll, we'll have if this thing is equal to uh, one thing, then do that. Um, if it isn't, then do the other. So I'll, I'll, I'll write you a logic equation uh, now here. So equals, and then we've got an if. And let's say, actually, we'll do it down here. Um, equals if that is equal to, uh, is uh, greater than 100, okay, and we'll say um, red, otherwise we'll say green, close the bracket. Okay, so that would be a logic equation, and let's have this as, and drag the two across. Okay, so we could have this, this thing here written within the spreadsheet. But we don't really, that's not really making that a nice colour. Can we do this so that actually these greens and reds here, the statements of drag green, will turn to actual colours here? And we do that using conditional formatting instead. So instead of being this writing out within the worksheet, we adjust it uh, within the conditional formatting. So we're going to highlight our cells that we want to conditional format. And then you up to here, right, uh, left click there on that little arrow. When you left click on that little arrow, this then drops down into this menu here. So you've got this menu here. And we're saying we've got some various options. And we have a lot of options within conditional formattings. So here, this would be something like, say, greater than or less than. So I flick that open there. Uh, sorry, flick that open to here. If you flick that open there then you and hit that, you get an option. You can put whatever the greater than is. And then you do the formatting in here. It'll give you then pick the options down for formatting. It'll give you some options which are sort of word uh, ones, gives you a few various things like um, it sort of opened up here with um, red with dark red font in here and greens with it without it. Um, I didn't like that. I went to more options. And in the more options, you've got format cells in here. So you can pick the fill. That you want and the font that you want and they'll have the colors in there so that's how you would get this and then that produces that so instead of having you can see in here there's nothing in here 
in the actual sheet what there is is conditional formatting set to it now um, and when we so instead of set and, and in, in available I can't sort of flip that down oh actually I can flip that down sorry you won't see it but if you now click down on on that having set one you can clear some rules so you could clear some rules now which is not sort of set in there um, and then I'll show you the manage rules later on so we can go from here to here where it's now turning this thing being read via this conditional formatting step of clicking down on the arrow and then using these ones here so this one here gives you some things where you're going to have things that are greater than less than between two numbers or equal to particular numbers um, you can switch it to texts and um, dates and what have you and um, so you've got these various options here which will do it for you and um, you can use new rule and just write it uh, in there so I'll, I'll actually I'll take you through writing in a second the top and bottom rules will give you the top whatever percentages that you want and the bottom whatever percentages that you want if you want to do that now here top and bottom rules color scales and data bars the advantage of them is it does a lot of the calculations for you what are the top costs what are the low what, what are the highest costs what are the least costs the less best performing products the lowest ones whatever uh, the issue is it's relative so your entire company could be performing really badly it gives a department looking green or green it's just the least worst department of your your uh, your company similarly everything could be doing really well and um, something's coming out red because that's the least well performing department of your company and um, it doesn't in reality really help and um, when you get down to actually start to start to use it color scales aren't that helpful um when you're really doing it because it's a it's a relative value rather than absolute values and you're typically when you're setting budgets going to set absolute values of this is what I want it to be and you often use this for, for, for budgets and purposes uh, and then um, so you're more likely to use the absolute value versions here these cell rules here than these relative ones here now I said there was something else which was you could write it yourself so if we go into here um, I've then clicked from this using these ones any of these here and instead I've gone into either new rule where I'm going to write a new rule or I'm going to go into manage rules and I'm going to in manage rules put a new rule in there if I decide that I'm going to go into manage rules uh, all the rules that exist and uh, will, will be in there so let's say I actually made a mistake I didn't want it to be greater than uh, 100 I wanted it to be uh, greater than 150 I go into manage rules and then I go into edit and I pick that rule and I edit it. Now you can see here this is um, how it's set up with cells that contain. So back to this one here. This is cells that contain in here. And it's given me these various options with these grey lines, and you can change these options around in here. Um, there would be some of the cells uh, based on their values would also be the same kind of thing here these would be the relative ones and then at the bottom would be this formula one to determine which cells to format now I can actually write this out if you choose that as an option this switches off from giving these kind of things and it just gives you uh, the ability to write it in an equation this is a little bit more advanced as you can see here I wrote out this logic condition here if C8 is greater than 100 comma red otherwise that how it actually looks in conditional formatting is if you go and write it equals if c8 is equal to or is greater than 100 comma 1 okay and that's it it ends at that point there turns false um here um not drag it around there you go there's some ones um, there. Now that so that doesn't doesn't really make much sense within the actual body of the worksheet, but to Excel in conditional formatting, this is saying if D8 is greater than 100, true, and do, and then you'll have a set of additional things, which is the bottom down here of the format. You'll click in the format, you'll set the format that you want it to, and what it will say is equals if this item is is greater than whatever you set, 100 in this case, comma true, do this format. If not, don't do that format. That's it. I need for that one. So you have within Excel, click down on that arrow in conditional formatting. When you're in 
the cell that you want to do or whether you highlight the whole range of the cells. Click down on it. Up will come this here. You can either got some preset ones that you can go through in here. Typically, you'll tend to use these. You'll not tend to use color scales. Um, they're, they're more more uh, relative values. Or alternatively, there's a more advanced version. You can produce your rules here, or you can manage them. If it's gone horribly wrong uh, in here, then you can highlight. You won't see this coming on the on the menu, but if you click down on there, highlight, and there'll be a gap here. But actually, this is where the where the um, where the menus appeared, and then down to here with clear rules. You could clear rules from the selected cells, or you could clear them from the entire sheet. The problem if you get your conditional formatting wrong is that these um, condition this these um, uh, conditional formats tend to then lurk around still. So if you add more conditional formatting on more rules and whatever, you have actually haven't fixed the original one or got rid of it. So quite often you have to clear out um, all of the formatting and then start again. Um, that's conditional formatting. Then let's just look through the book. Um, I'm a bit longer so that we can just make sure that we've got it on because I think the book's too short. Uh, so it's sort of saying that we can change the cell color of display to a different uh, um, font face um, or a fill and on a conditional formatting. Yeah. Um, why is it used for that? Well, let's imagine that this goes on for ever and ever and ever. That, that, and we want to skim down this data and just have particular things that are spitting out that are red. In there, or we want to highlight stuff and say that's we're going to communicate. Um, let's just be clear about what accountancy is. First, we've got the collection of data, we've got the communication of data, typically to non accountants, and we've got uh, taking actions. We've got three things that we want to do. Uh, within the accountancy, we're going to collect data. So our double entry bookkeeping, how we collect things, what we do, our our, um, our verification of data against uh, particular financial documents, let's say, as you would have seen in controls, what have you. We've got a communication of data. So what we're taking this data and we're sort of telling people what it means and what what what, what we what it what it looks like and what have you. What what's the answer? So basically turning that data into information. And we've got taking actions. So let's say chasing bad debts, doing things like that, uh, deciding what we're going to do, how, what prices are we going to set, uh, what, what uh, are we going to offer, um, discounts allowed or not. This conditional formatting heavily sits in this communication of data. We're saying here, this is too high, this is too high, we've turned it red. It makes it clearer for people to sort of see uh, these ideas, this idea of using colour. So that's the point of that. Uh, it says, right, logical operations. Um, so logical operations in here, yeah, is, is the cell greater than this? Is it less than that? Is it between this? Is it equal to that? Does it contain particular texts uh, or dates um, in there? Or, well, we can have one for duplicate values. We've got this bottom and top rules here, which is in here. These items here, uh, various averages and what have you. Um, we've also got color scales where we can get them to compare uh, the whole list and sort of highlight them between what, what your, the highest to lowest. Um, you know, so that would be the color, color scales there. We also as well have this ability down the bottom to actually just write it uh, directly in Excel. Don't do that now. Um, get a bit of an idea later on when we do a, uh, we'll do um, logic uh, tests later on. Um, and, uh, uh, just make it, make it easier. Um, right, so that takes us through to page. So for a group of cells, we would select required cells. I've done there. Set the conditional formatting from the menu bar, which comes down in here. Enter the rules that we want to over here. Um, when you do that, when you click on those and choose them, it will give you a, um, a version. It will give you a series of, of um, particular versions, which you probably won't really like because um, they're not the greatest. Um, and Or you'll use the custom format uh, one. I don't know if I set one up here. Um, I put when you I use the custom sort format, so I flip, flip hit the custom format in here, and you can see that was the original one that came up. Um, red font on red background, not great. Uh, so I said I changed the fill and I hit the red. I wanted a more darker red, and I hit the font and I switched it back to black. And then I switched enter, and then that that worked. Pressed OK. There. and that worked. A lot better for me and that produced that instead. 
OK. To click the conditional formatting for a group of cells, um, oops, I'll show you what clear conditional formatting is. It's in here. So we've, come, we've hit that arrow down. You come into the clear rules here, and then you would clear. Clear the rules. Have I got? No, I, I don't have a print screen for that, but that's where it would be. You'd clear it across there, and you'd either do it for the entire sheet or the selected cells. And that is conditional formatting then. Um, a bit more of explanation. I think the book, if you were just hurled straight into it and didn't know where the arrows actually were, uh, you'd struggle with that one. I uh, hope that was useful. Thanks. Thanks for listening. Bye.